So thank you very much so for the invitation to speak here and the opportunity to present my work. So and also to speak in front of Masaki Kashiwara, whose work has influenced many of my uh, current research. So um, in this talk, my goal is to explain how um, Classical results concerning representation of Lie algebras, if they are adapted in a suitable categorical framework, can be helpful to understand uh, classical results of algebraic geometry. So I will first present um, two parallel stories concerning the geometry of the diagonal of a smooth scheme. <laughs> if all mistakes are of that sort, I would be happy. So. <laughs> okay, so the first one is the so called Horschild Costan Rosenberg. Isomorphism. And the second uh, parallel story is the Lie structure on the shifted cotangent complex. It's complex or the co Lie structure on the cotangent complex. So now the modern point of view is that these two things are related by what's called the derived loop space. So let's call it Lx, which is the derived fiber product of the diagonal with itself in the category of derived scheme. And uh, so L of x is a derived group scheme over x. If you fix a projection, so the, its Lie algebra is exactly that stuff. It's this shifted tangent bundle with its Lie structure. And if you look L of x over x, it's also the total space of a linear fibration, which is omega x1 of 1. And this is the HKR isomorphism. So this is a modern way of seeing these two things related. But uh, I will do a bit of history about uh, these two objects, so originally goes back to these three authors for a regular algebra, associative algebra A over a field K of characteristic zero. The HKR isomorphism computes the Horschild <coughs> homology ring of A. It's just the East differential over the base field K. And so this statement has been generalized to geometric context. So let's say if x is smooth and projective over k, and if I look at the diagonal injection of x into x cross x, the geometric HKR isomorphism can be written as an isomorphism between 
the derived pullback of the structure sheaf of the diagonal and the symmetric algebra of omega x1 shifted by 1 in the derived categories of sheaves on x. You mean non coherent shift, just shift? As you wish, current sheaves also. You can put with current common genes. So the, the first statement is true for smooth algebra over k without regular. Yeah. It's what? regular. It yeah. doesn't require characteristic. Here, here, regular will work. So in the first statement, yes, this HI, you don't need characteristic zero if A is smooth. No, but for regular, I'm not sure. Ah, no, but let us say A is smooth over K. Okay. But in the second, you need characteristic zero. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Here also, yeah. I will always assume characteristic zero. Yeah, yeah. And um, so this has been done by many authors. Swan, Gekuccelli, and and uh, I was aware of an unpublished proof of Kashiwara uh, in a letter to Shapira in '92 that works, in fact, for even for x complex, which relies on a completely different strategy that you don't try to shifify the bar complex, but you produce an ad hoc resolution on the first formal neighborhood of the diagonal in x cross x. So on the other side, the least structure on the shifted tangent complex on the commutative algebraic side, it has been discovered independently by André and Quillen, I think in the 70s. So on the TA. So this Lie structure on the shifted tangent complex of a commutative algebra. And then the make breakthrough was done in a paper by Kapranov and later on by Mark Arian, Kaplanov in 99. And perhaps I'm not aware of the literature, but the most up-to-date paper on this thing is due to Enyon in 2016, where he proves his structure for X is any derived art in stack. So for instance, if X is BG for an algebraic group, the shifted tangent complex is G itself, and you recover the Lie algebra structure <coughs> on the Lie group of G. So the two stories were linked originally. The link was to prove index theorems. So, so Riemann-Roch type theorems, so for Kashiwara it was in the framework of D modules motivated by a conjecture of Shapira and Schneiders. For myself it was a motivation to the standard Grothendieck Riemann-Roch theorem in complex geometry where there are some cases that are still open. And uh, I would like again to recall a formula due to Kashiwara that was my main motivation to enter into this story, which was a conjecture in 92 that I solved in 2011, is that you take x, a complex manifold, And you look at the following map. So you take the Grothendieck cycle class of the diagonal, say of dimension n, so the 
this is just the Grothendieck cycle class of delta in x cross x. And then I project here on the diagonal And here it's a canonical bundle. And then I use a dual version of the HKR isomorphism. And so let's write, I prefer, okay. The direct sum of HI X omega XI. And the conjecture is that the composite map here is the Todd class of X. So it looks exactly, you see how it's linked with index theorems. It's exactly what you consider when you want to apply Lefschetz formalism. You take the cycle class of the diagonal and then you restrict it to the diagonal. So in the topological case, it's just the Euler class of the diagonal. But in the complex or algebraic case, it's much more complicated. And the HKR isomorphism entered into the picture even if there was no Lie theory, aspe Lie theoretic aspects in uh, Kashiwara's <coughs> approach. So then um, there was some conceptual explanation let's say, Lie theoretic explanations on why the Todd class is related to Lie theory. So this is due to, this was hinted by Fagin. When you go to slow formula, you start with shifts. But then yeah. go to global no, global. it's one. Sorry, H. Sorry. So it was hinted by Fagin, and then <coughs> done by Markarian. And um, the reason is this: if you take G, a Lie algebra. say, a finite dimension over the base field. Then you can consider the Duflo element of G it is uh, the element I write it this or the inverse, depends on the convention. So I see it as a formal power series of invariant polynomials on G. And uh, a conceptual way of looking at this element is as follow. If you have a Lie group G such as its Lie algebra is G, you have two maximal differential forms in the neighborhood of the origin in the Lie algebra G. You can transport the left invariant volume form on G, so you transport it by the exponential map and you divide it by the natural top invariant form on the Lie algebra. So it gives you a function in the neighborhood of the origin and it is exactly the Duflo element of G.
And in fact, what Markaran proof is that if you take, so for G now, you take Tx shifted by minus one. So this leaves in the derived category D of X and it is a Lie object endowed with Kapranov structure. So I have to describe, so D of X symmetric monoidal category. So what is the Lie bracket? It's just the Atia class of Tx. And if we carry on this story in the categorical framework for this Lie algebra, the Duflo element of Tx of minus one is the Todd class of X. Okay. So for interested readers, there is a recent uh, proof of Groton Dickerman Rock using this formalism by uh, Gates Gori and Konsevich. So this is a classical story for the diagonal and uh, it's, it's not written yet. I mean, Gates Gori gave talks about this, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but. You could remember also, I mean, several years ago you. Yes. So as a matter of fact, gates gori konsevich approach works. It's a two categorical approach, so it works. I think it's perhaps a, uh, the most intrinsic proof you can get in the categorical framework. But the problem is with traces. So in the complex case, it doesn't work because the, the category of coherent sheaves has not enough good properties, such as compactly generated and things like that. So I proved so for, for the Riemann-Roch theorem, the first proof, so let me say, summarize. The first intrinsic proof, so the original proof in the complex case was the O'Brien Toledo tongue, which is, use the left shed's formalism, but is not at all conceptual. And then, so there has been the proof by Markarian And on the other side, the proof by Kashiwara. So the unpublished proof of Kashiwara in 92, modulo the conjecture. So the conjecture that I proved that completes the proof. And there is this gates gori konsevich thing that perhaps even nicer, but works only if X is algebraic. Okay, so now, um, so I was really interested in this intrinsic formula expressing uh, the Todd class as hidden in the HKR isomorphism. And uh, there is some natural thing to do is try to generalize this story, not for the diagonals, but for arbitrary subschemes. So I'm looking at a closed subscheme or a closed complex of manifold X in Y. And the question is, w when do we have the same property, so the derived self-intersection of OX is homomorphic to its formal associated object. So again, this unpublished work of Kashiwara was really helpful. So in 92, again, Kashiwara proved that it is true if the embedding of X into its first, first formal neighborhood splits. It means that the normal sequence is globally split. 
and uh, Arinkin and Kaldararu so 20 years later proved that it is true if and only if the conormal bundle <coughs> extends to a locally free sheaf on the first formal neighborhood. Okay, so. Sorry? Because there are two different versions of the equation. It's a coherent, it's isomorphism in coherent sheaves on X. In the derived category, I mean. No, no, because uh, one can write isomorphism given by differential operators, not linear or by F. I don't know, it's a derived, it's X linear. X linear. X linear. So in the in the derived category of yeah. OX shifts, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, well you know. It's yes. Oui. Ah oui, mais c'était pour le pour le film. Ok. Pardon. Ah, il est film aussi. Ok. So. So what I will call a quantized cycle it's a triplet x y sigma where x is a closed subscheme of y and sigma is a splitting of the first neighborhood if it exists So it's just a splitting of the normal exact sequence. And so if you are in this situation, so we can decompose the restricted tangent bundle of Y can restrict it to X, it splits at the direct sum of the shifted tangent bundle of X and the normal bundle. So, yeah, it implies, yes, if you have this, it implies a splitting. And the splitting depends on sigma. And then it's the geometrization of something which is well known in the framework of Lie theory. It's called reductive pairs. When you have H included in G, but G splits as a direct sum as H modules. So this guarantees that the couple Tx minus one, Ty minus one restricted to X is a reductive pair in the categorical sense. But the second factor is not necessarily the idea. No, that will be my point. But, okay, so now uh, the question is what is this, how to describe the Lie structure on that guy? So, So since the first formal neighborhood splits, the second formal neighborhood of X in Y is determined by two cohomological invariants. So the first one is 
a class alpha that lives in X1 of the conormal bundle with values to the second symmetric power of the conormal bundle and it is simply the extortion class of so I denote by I the ideal sheaf of X in Y so all these sheaves lives in the first formal neighborhood and I push them down on X by my retraction so this is n star and this is S to n star and the second class which I call beta that lives in x to 1 omega 1 s to n star this class is the obstruction to lift sigma to the second neighborhood and these two classes completely encode this second neighborhood. Okay. And so the Lie algebra, it is Ty shifted by minus one restricted to x. Its computation gives that it is, so I have these two factors, Tx of minus one. So here, the action of Tx on n, so I told you it's a reductive pair, so I have no factor on Tx, but on n, it's simply the action by the Atya class, so the tangent act on n. Okay. On Tx shifted by minus one, it is a Lie sub algebra, so it's simply the Atya class of the tangent bundle. So here it's the same. And the last part, so what is the Lie product on the, the, the complement of the Lie subalgebra? So I have two parts. The first one is alpha from n cross n to n, if I return by duality. And the second one, which arrives with values in Tx, is beta. Okay. So why did you have the Tia class direct sum zero or something? Sorry? Did you have the Tia class direct sum zero? That's yeah, yeah, because I put the first component is with values in Tx and the second with values in N. Here is a bracket of two elements in Tx. So I'm saying that it is subalgebra, there is no component in N. So here is a zero in Just, okay, so this Z0 means exactly that it's a reductive pair. That is, the complement is a module. Okay, so. When you write this bracket, it's just, just it's a rest structure it's so I just here it's n only on the derived category so I'm, uh, I'm not uh, looking uh, at higher bracket uh, it's uh, just uh, the Atya class in cohomology okay so a priori there is no reason as uh, say that there is a least structure on the normal bundle but returning to my original motivation I define a cycle class for quantized cycles. So the definition is the same as Kashiwara's definition. You start with a relative dualizing bundle. So this is a Grothendieck cycle class of X in Y. Then I project it again to X. And then I use HKR, so generalized HKR for quantized cycles. So it depends on 
sigma and I arrived into the symmetric algebra over OX of the normal bundle shifted by minus one. And so this gives me a class that leaves in the cohomology of the exterior product of the conormal bundle. And the question is, what is how to compute this class? So for the diagonal, it's the Todd class, as we saw. There is also the fact that what is new is that if x is a zero set of a section of a vector bundle on y that vanishes transversely, and if there is a compatibility with uh, uh, the sigma, meaning that E restricted to x to the first neighborhood is a pullback of the normal bundle, then this class is trivial, it has only a component in degree zero. So in a sense, it's an obstruction class to have a linear tubal neighborhood. But uh, what it is, so a recent answer to this uh, question was uh, given by Shilin Yu in 2015. It's a surprising answer. And the answer is if the pullback of the normal conormal bundle, so which is a local of free sheaf on the first neighborhood, can extend to a locally free sheaf on the second neighborhood, then this class can be computed and I won't be precise here, looks like uh, the Todd class of the normal bundle. So a generated series uh, involving Bernoulli numbers related to the normal or conormal bundle doesn't make much. So what I want to explain is, so again, use approach made no use of Lie theory whatsoever, it uses homological perturbation theory. And this, con this condition, this extension of the second neighborhood, I want to um, give a least theoretic explanation. So I don't know if I said at the beginning, but everything is joint work with Damien Calac from Montpellier. What is the definition of the original? Uh, it's this. The definition of x sigma is this. You take the Grothendieck cycle class of the diagonal, you restrict it to x, and then you use hkr. It gives you a class like this. But the Grothendieck cycle class should involve the, the some yeah. differentials, no? <laughs> no? I just see it in the x of the codimension. So it, uh, for me, the gr it's here. Everything is smooth, so there is no no higher terms. So um, we introduce, so let me give uh, uh, some terminology. Uh, so it's for general reductive pairs. So I take G H plus N a reductive pair. So there are two cases two general cases where the quotient is naturally a Lie algebra. So the first condition, it's, it's called the split condition. It's the most easy you can think of is if you take the bracket of two elements of N and you project on H, it is zero. Then of course G is a cross product and N is a Lie subalgebra. Since there is no component, since the bracket gives no component of H. But we introduce second conditions that's called tame. So here N, it's even 
an ideal, Lie ideal in G. So the same condition is that if you take the bracket of two elements, you project in H, and then you take again the bracket with element of N, you get zero. So of course it's weaker, but this condition implies that N is also a Lie algebra, so with the restriction of the bracket. Sorry? Pi, pi n, thanks. Because when you take the Jacobi identity, you only need these brackets to vanish, not the first component. And um, so what we proved is this. So the first part. It's purely yeah, it's purely the algebra. So okay, in this condition, is it really, I mean, it's a subspace and then. Uh, is it anti-symmetrization also? No, no, it's for any, uh, no. any, three any, any three elements. Because one can make yeah. Just yeah, yeah. No, no, it's for any three elements. And then what we prove, so the first theorem is that the pair, so we're again looking at the quantized cycle. So the pair Tx, so this pair of Lie algebra object in D of x is, so it's split if and only if beta equals zero. So the retraction extends to the second order, so this is the easy case, and it is tame if and only if use condition is verified. Which is sigma star n extends to the second neighborhood. So to prove this, it's simply you, you know the the explicit table of the Lie algebra T Y restricted to X, and you have just to interpret. So since everything is a categorical framework, uh, these computations involve extension classes. So this condition is uh, lives in X two of S two N tensor n, n, vanishing of a class in here, and you just have to identify it with the obstruction class to extend this bundle at the second order. And as soon as you have this, so So, if you, I take a reductive pair which is tame, so there is a G action on the universal enveloping algebra of N with its least structure. So the action of n is the multiplication, and the action of h, since h, since g, it, n is an algebra in the category of h modules, is just the action by bracket. 
And uh, yes, you can prove that. I will go back to this later. The invariant, the induced u of n is the induced representation of the trivial representation of h from h to n. So I will come back to this point later. But so now coming back to the cycle class, second theorem. Mm -hmm. What is your universal? It's an induced representation. Oh, it's an enveloping algebra of n with this Lie algebra structure. What do you mean? I mean, it's induced, so from G H to G. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So everything is in geometric, in the categorical framework, so it says that it's very fast a universal property. Okay, so the second theorem is that, so I give again x, y, sigma, which is tame, then the cycle class is the Duflo element of the shifted normal bundle. So this is U theorem in a conceptual form. So I should say that this least structure in our case is just given by alpha. By definition, it's a projection of the bracket to n. OK, so the last part, and I will give a hint of proofs that we did, is so fundamental work of Markarian and also Amados. is to compute the universal enveloping algebra of Tx of minus 1. So this is related to it's this geometrization of classical problems in Lie theory, such as the Duflo isomorphisms. And in the setting of the diagonal, it's simply given by the projection. So again, it involves the HKR isomorphism. So it's the X algebra of the diagonal. And most important in this framework, the Poincare Birkovit theorem for Tx shifted by minus one becomes the HKR isomorphism in cohomology. So this point of view allows to understand the algebra structure on the, this object with respect to the Yoneda product, because the dual HKR isomorphism is only additive, but its multiplicative structure is encoded by the constant structure of the enveloping algebra. So here, it's an iterated bracket involving the Atya class of the tangent bundle. So... Tx minus 1 is the same as h or n? It's, so here, no, for the diagonal, so if... <coughs> h and n. What in part? this case, it will be n, but in the diagonal, it's the same are. So both are the same. But here I'm looking at this at n, but... So, I should say that Kala Kaldararu N2 gave a very, the most general algebraic structure for the normal bundle shifted by minus one, even if there is no quantization condition, it's what they call the derived Lie algebraid. So 
it's a much more complicated structure, but they computed its universal enveloping algebra. Uh, it, it, it will be the r hom over OY, OX, OX, but only as a sheaf of modules over the base field, because it's an algebroid. So here we'll, be, we'll do a refined version in the case of the normal bundle as shifted normal bundles as a least structure. So again, so sigma is jump tame. Then, so the first thing is that if we derive, so I derived with respect to the first variable, so I put left here and not as a bifunctor. So is naturally an algebra object in D of X. So this is not obvious because if you derive only with respect to the first variables, you cannot compose a priori. So it's an algebra of in D of X and is naturally isomorphic <coughs> to U of the universal and overlapping algebra of the shifted normal bundle. It means that I derive, it means the derived functor, I should say, R hom O Y. So I derive this functor and I apply it to OX. So I don't derive it as a bifunctor. So So here it is uh, everything is OX linear in the So this functor goes from OX modules to OX modules because of that. And, and the universal... Oh, Y module to OX module, sorry, yes. And it is universal enveloping algebra of, of a Lie. Of the Lie, this Lie object, so it's an object in D of X. So when you say Lie object in D of X, you mean you have to say it's a... It's an object with a morphism in any, I mean, I can make sense of a Lie object in any symmetric monoidal category. And you don't need some enhancement, so... No, 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 no. I'm doing it, you can do this L infinity structure and do enhancement here. I do it only on the level of derived category. So the first bracket and I kill the higher homotopies. Okay, so now a few words um, of the proofs. So, uh, to compute the cycle class, we introduce the notion of, let's say, L-torsion morphisms. So this is a strange property because it doesn't seem to happen often in classical Lie algebras, but nevertheless, so I take C, a symmetric <coughs> monoidal category, and I take an object P in C and I say that a morphism phi from P to, so I have to add some hypothesis, something like Carubian, otherwise, and infinite direct sum, at least countable direct sum. So I take a morphism from my object in, so I take G a Lie object in C into the filter part of the symmetric algebra of G. I'd say that it is a L torsion morphism If when I take the following composition, so I start from my G algebra, Lie algebra times the initial object. So 
so I do identity time phi. So I write in my filter part. So by the Poincaré Birkovit, I send it into G tensor products U of G. Then I do the multiplication in U of G. And then I apply PBW reverse. So I go back to S of G. And I ask that it only contain terms of degree L plus 1. So all terms in degree less than or equal that L are killed. Factors through S L plus 1 G. It's another assumption or it's just a consequence? It's definition. So I say that such a morphism, okay. so, so it involves all terms, but if I multiply morally by element of degree 1 in U of J, it kills everything. So only the product on the L plus 1 component remains. So implicitly you are in Cartesian 0? Yeah, 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 yeah. So your symmetric monoidal... Uh, category, yeah, K-linear. K-linear, well, K... -linear. K linear, yeah, everything, yeah, otherwise with characteristic K. It's K, the true hypothesis is has to be Carubian. So every idempotent splits. It has to be K linear of a field of characteristic zero and you have to allow countable direct sums. And then, I mean, we proved that it was in the folklore, but PBW holds. So you're almost as in the classical case. Deline wrote it for abelian categories, but in fact his proof transpose without problems. In. He wrote it in this case to cover graded Lie algebras, but if you assume Carubian, everything works the same. So morally, an L torsion element, it's an element in the else filter part of the universal enveloping algebra, but if you multiply by degree one elements, Everything is killed, you just get the top product after PBW. And the theorem is that if phi is an L torsion morphism, then phi is entirely determined by its top component of degree L phi is in fact the Duflo element of G contracted with its component of degree L. So as soon as you have the top components, you go all the other ones by contracted with this element. And then in the geometrical case, you can prove that the morphism from the dualizing complex to this R home OX OX is an L torsion morphism. Okay, and then still no time left. Just to say for <laughs> the description of the universal enveloping algebra. So here it will be uh, the top, the codimension. So the reason is really easy. Is, is just can explain. Is just if you do this. If you go from OX to the shifted normal bundle, so you apply the morphism OX to the conormal bundle, which is the Atya sequence, this is zero because OY you map it to OXY1, and this is a distinguished triangle. And this thing is a dual of the multiplication g times u of g goes to g, u of g, if you write it properly. So you get the L torsion property on the node geometrically. Okay, and last part is how you describe the, this, the algebra structure on that stuff. So 
you have this isomorphism. So this is by the HKR isomorphism isomorphic to the symmetric algebra of the shifted normal bundle. And so what we prove is by hand that the algebra structure here, the structure constants are exactly the structure constants of S of G via, via PBW by proving the induction relations on all the structure constants. Okay, I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Question, remarks? So this is a distinguished line down? No. Here, this one. It's just, it's this one. So this is ah, but you wrote O X, not O X. This is O X. So in the middle. You no, this one is a di this, this, this. So it factors through O Y goes to O X second at the first order. And the composition of these three ones. I say that this composition is zero. And this is because you go there. This is a conormal bundle. Ah, you just say the composition is yeah. zero, not that it's. No, no, the composition is zero because, because I compose the extension. I compose this map with the extension map which goes there. This is two successive. No, no, yeah, I see. No, no, it's not a distinguished triangle. The composition of two successive arrows of a distinguished triangle. Um, sorry, I probably missed it. So uh, if you go back to Lee's theory, what's the statement about U of N that you kind of uh, assuming that it's tame? So then, okay. then what? So I, I wrote it as an induced representation, but in the classical case, so I have G is H plus N. So U of N as a G module, it's this statement. And it was believed, but without proof that in the geometric case, this guy, would be that. And so the algebra of invariance of this algebra, H invariance of this algebra would be the X algebra. And uh, it is indeed the case as a corollary of what we did in the tame case. So it is really interesting because there is a conjecture of Duflo related this algebra so the center of this algebra with the Poisson center of the symmetric algebra of G over H. And so this conjecture is widely open and takes the opportunity to point that there is one other case among symmetric pairs in the classical case, which is well studied, which is the cause of symmetric pairs. So for symmetric pairs, H is just the fixed locus of an involution. And this case is somehow completely disjoint from the Tame case, because in the case of a symmetric pair, there is a canonical splitting, but the projection so there is a Lie algebra structure, but the projection is zero for eigenspace reason. But in the same case, do you prove the Duflo conjecture? No, no, no. So in the same case, it says that it relates the H invariance of U of N. But I mean, there is no mystery because in the diagonal case where 
So if you embed g into g plus g, if you take the splitting given by one of the projections, it's tame. This is a case of global retraction. You end up into the classical Duflo thing. So there is no simple proof of that. Other, other questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>